Hello, this is Dr. Tracy Zhang, and today we're going to talk about variants of normal. This recording was done with Screencast-O-Matic. So what are variants of normal, you ask? A variant of normal is a condition that differs from the norm or the majority of presentations, and yet it's considered completely normal. That seems like a contradiction, but there are many people who have an unusual or odd presentation of a condition, but it is still considered normal. For the purposes of this class for dental hygienists, we're going to look at approximately eight or nine variants of normal. The typical ones, and I'm sure you've seen most of these in clinic last semester, include linea alba, leukoedema, lingual varicosities, Fordyce granules, tori, which can come in both maxillary and mandibular, melanin pigmentation, retrocuspid papillae, medium rhomboglossitis, and geographic tongue. The first condition we're going to look at is leukoedema. This presents as an asymptomatic, bilateral, whitish-gray, semi-transparent macule of the buccal mucosa. So a macule means that it's a, considered a flat lesion as opposed to something raised. So this is very transparent, kind of grayish tissue. And the unusual thing about leukoedema is that this tissue is very uh, transparent and it's also bilateral. Typically we see this more often in adults and beginning in adolescence. Well, we don't usually see it in children as much, but it does seem to affect the majority of African American men. However, they have seen mucosal changes like these in children as early as three to five years of age. Lingual varicosities is considered another variant of normal. If you take a look at this person's tongue, we're looking at the ventral surface of the tongue here. You can see these purplish distended veins, almost like varicose veins in the tongue. And indeed, that's very close to what these are. These are entirely normal and can occasionally be seen in places other than the typical lingual arteries and veins that you see here. Occasionally, we'll see little bits of varicosities on the patient's lip or the buccal mucosa, although this is the most common area for lingual varicosities to occur. Fordyce granules is an unusual appearing lesion that also occurs on the buccal mucosa. Fordyce granules are these very small little yellow lesions that you see on this person's cheek. They consist of sebaceous gland tissue and are very common in many people. Let's talk about tori. This picture shows a, real, a very large mandibular tori. There is also a considerable tori that can occur in the maxillary arch at the roof of the mouth. Tori are unusual because they're so large, and usually the patient is fully aware that they have this condition. It's important that you find out before you do anesthetic procedures for that patient. Melanin pigmentation is another very common variant of normal. This typically happens with African American patients and also some patients from the Mediterranean area. This melanin pigmentation that you see here scalloping along the gingiva is completely normal. But you do still need to keep track of it and take a look at it so that you can assess on a regular basis the condition of the pigmentation on the gingiva. Hairy tongue is a typical variant of normal that tends to affect the tongue, and in fact the midline of the tongue. Fissure tongue also affects the tongue, 
And you can see from this great picture here that we have some very, very deep fissures. An interesting condition called retrocuspid papillae occurs on the lingual side of the mandibular arch and they are just adjacent to the canine in this particular person. The majority of time they are located on the lateral incisor area but more often or not they're located on the canine area and you can see these very tiny bumps on each side the tissue is entirely normal looking. It's the exact same color as the surrounding gingival tissue. It has the same consistency and feel. So it's definitely not an infection or any other condition like that. This is just a condition in which the person has developed larger sessile nodules of the mandibular alveolar mucosa. Median rhomboid glossitis is an interesting condition that seems to be connected to candida. Patients with median rhomboid glossitis tend to have this red area appearing directly in the midline of the tongue, right here, and it's typically the same place for every patient. For many years we considered it to be a complete unknown and we didn't have any idea what caused medium rhomboid glossitis. However, in recent years, much of the research seems to indicate that there are candida organisms in the lesion. Geographic tongue is another lesion that has been a mystery for many years. We do know, however, that geographic tongue has a genetic tendency and it does run in families. With this particular patient, you can see that they have quite a few areas of what we call denuded papillae. That means that the papillae, which normally look like these white areas, are pretty much gone from the tongue. The area is very smooth and it's not exhibiting the normal papillae that you would usually see in that area. The interesting thing about geographic tongue is that these areas of denuded papillae move around frequently. With some patients with geographic tongue, you'll notice that they occasionally they have completely normal tongues with papillae covering it totally. Other times they'll have a geographic tongue lesion, maybe a small one or two, and each time you see them, that lesion will move to a different place on their tongue. A few years ago, we had a student who had geographic tongue, and she told us that she had a hard time eating very sour things because her tongue would burn if she had an active geographic tongue lesion. Uh, to her, the most sour thing that she would eat for that particular time in her life was uh, salt and vinegar potato chips. So she learned to stay away from salt and vinegar potato chips during that time. Linea alba is a very common condition and you'll see that as a buildup of keratin, which we call hyperkeratosis, on the buccal mucosa along the plane of occlusion. It typically tends to be bilateral and it's definitely the result of cheek biting. This is a condition we see in almost every student here at West Liberty. Uh, we all know the college is very stressful and it seems to be a reaction to stress. That covers the most common variants of normal. We've looked at linea alba, leuka edema, lingual varicosities, fordyce granules, tori, both mandibular and maxillary, hairy and fissured tongue, melanin pigmentation, retrocuspid papillae, median rhomboid glossitis, and geographic tongue. Be sure you remember these typical variants of normal.
you will most definitely see these again throughout the entire semester. Thanks for listening, and I will see you next time in our pathology videos.